of the internet, I'm Shannon, and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys. And today we're going to be talking about The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. Right off the bat, I've got to tell you that I really enjoyed this. This book takes place um, in two separate time periods. Um, one half of the book takes place in the late 1700s, and the other half takes place in present day. The, um, the time periods kind of go back and forth between from chapter to chapter, sometimes two chapters in the past and then one in the present. And it's told from three different points of view. We have Eliza and Nella back in the 1700s, and then we have Caroline in the present day. Caroline's from Ohio, but she's in England on what should have been her 10th anniversary trip. But before they left, um, they really hit a rough patch in their marriage and she found out that he was being unfaithful and so she decided, you know what? Screw ya, I'm going alone. So off she went. She checks into her hotel, she goes to look around for things to do and she finds a group of people that are, um, sort of when the tide goes out, they go into the sand and they dig and they try to find treasures. And while she's there, she finds a little vial um, and it's got a little bear engraved into it and that sets her off on a journey to discover what this vial is, what it was used for, who used it, and when. Meanwhile, back in the 1700s, like I said, we've got Eliza and Nell, uh, Nella. Nella is the owner of an apothecary shop. This shop used to belong to her mother and her mother used to make medicines for women in particular. It was really important to her to help women specifically. Um, after Nella took it over, after her mother passed away, Nella took it a little further. And after a particularly traumatic event in her own life, she begins to make, um, well, she had been doing it before then, but this traumatic event just really led her more down the path of um, in a hidden part of her shop in the back, she makes poisons for women who need to use poisons for whatever reason, if somebody's hurting them, if, you know, dire circumstances basically. And she makes them for women, word gets around and the women come to her. Now, right at the beginning of the book, we meet little Eliza. She is 12 years old and she ends up going to Nella because the woman that she works for is in need of a poison. So she shows up at Nella's door, explains the situation. And what the situation is, is the woman she works for is looking for a poison for her husband <laughs> because he's just, he's a very bad man. He's been hurting a lot of people and she wants to put an end to it. So Nella hooks her up with what she needs. It's an egg and the poison's inside of it. And she sort of sends Eliza off to take care of business. And uh, that's kind of where everyone is when we first meet them. And I just, I really, I really loved this book. I really, really loved the parts from the 1700s. At first as I was reading, I couldn't really get into the present day bits. I didn't really care too much but I was really invested in what was going on back at that apothecary shop. But then as time goes on, it does, the present day parts do pick up and um, I became more invested in Caroline's story as well. But that, we were nearing the end of the book before it really picked up for me. I found a lot of Caroline's pages, you could just sort of skim through, skim through them because it was just kind of her going somewhere and just kind of talking to people. <laughs> So we'll get into a bit of the spoilers, um, but before we do, if you don't want the spoilers, I'll just give you a final bit of a review and you can you can head on out of here. <laughs> so yeah, if you enjoy historical fiction, I think you'd like this. If you enjoy hearing about the ways that women used to try to find to survive back in the time when they really didn't have any other options. I think you'll find this interesting and I think it's really well written. The pacing was great. Um, aside from, like I said, for me personally, I didn't get too invested in Caroline's story until later on, but I did find the pacing very good. The characters, I thought they were developed nicely 
and the the story um, sort of unraveled to reveal itself in just just a perfect way and um, debut author. I just was browsing her bio here. Yeah. So this is her first book. Wonderful. I love reading new debut authors and seeing their their first offerings. It's always so interesting and they're always so good. And this was no exception. So like I said, if you don't want any spoilers, now's the time to get the heck on out of here and we can talk a little bit about the spoilers. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> So what ends up happening to Caroline in the present day is after she's in England a few days, I think she's in London, her husband James, the one she's been having the trouble with, he shows up. On an, like, well, he tells her he's coming, but he doesn't really give her any notice. He's just like, I'm on my way. Flowers end up being delivered to her. Like he's trying to soften her up before he arrives. When he gets there, he's very tired. He's, you know, they're both really, I would say, emotionally drained. She doesn't really want him there, but here he is, and now she's got to deal with him. Meanwhile, she's also working with um, a woman named Gaynor at a museum. I think it's a museum or the library. The library, I think. <laughs> and she's working to help her uncover sort of the mystery of this vial. So right from the get-go, we know that these two stories are going to be, we know that the vial that she found is going to have belonged to Nella and her apothecary shop. <laughs> so we didn't quite know how that was all going to come to be until pretty close to the end. Um, what ends up happening with Caroline is she, she almost gets herself into a real mess. Um, after James is there a day or two, he, he's not feeling well and he asks if she brought any Dayquil and she says, no, I didn't, but I did bring some eucalyptus oil and that's all she says. She doesn't really give him any instructions that it's supposed to be used topically, not ingested, and he ingests it. And he ends up having to be rushed to the hospital. He's very, very ill, like throwing up blood, the whole, the whole bit. So when the ambulance comes to get him, they see in her notebook that she has written a list of everyday items that can be used in large quantities to kill somebody. Of course, we know that that's from her research trying to find out who the vial belonged to and the things she's been learning. But of course, to the police, well, first of all, to the ambulance, they call the police because to them, this looks very, very, very suspicious. A very suspicious. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, now we're getting somewhere. That's when I really got interested. But that whole part was clued up so quickly. I thought probably in real life, she would have to do a bit more convincing than she does in this book um, that she wasn't trying to kill him. But it went well, it got clued up quickly. And then from there, her and James really decide that, you know, it's not, their marriage isn't worth salvaging. Because for the first part of the trip, she thinks that she might be pregnant, so she's kind of waiting to find out before she decides. But then while she's there, she finds out that she's not pregnant, and that's really just the, the thing that spurs her on to make a new life choice. And by the time we leave her, we learn that she's gonna be moving to England to attend Cambridge, which is what she had wanted to do all along, but James had kind of talked her out of it back when they got married. So that's kind of the end of her story. Now for my favorite parts, <laughs> Eliza and Nella. They, throughout their chapters, we get to learn more about each of them. We learn about the traumas that um, they've both been through. And um, as time passes, we see that Eliza becomes really smitten with Nella and she wants to stay and she wants to learn and she wants to help her. But Nella feels that that's just not the right thing. She doesn't want to bring this child, you know, she's only 12 years old, into a situation that, you know, where she's making poisons. Like she doesn't want that life for Eliza. And um, as time goes on, there's a situation that happens <laughs> that ends up going wrong. Uh, a woman comes looking for poison for her husband's mistress. And Nella's really off put by this because she says, you know what, I don't harm women. 
I don't, you know, whatever you've got going on, I don't make poisons for women to give to other women. It's not, I'm here to help women. <laughs> and this woman, you know, she's um, sort of higher up. She's a lady and she threatens to expose the whole operation, Nella, Eliza, everything. And so she says she'll be back the next day. Nella and Eliza feel like they have no options. So they make it up and, but <laughs> something goes wrong. And Nella had a feeling the whole time that something was gonna go wrong. There was just, she had some, this gut feeling that it was gonna go wrong and it does. While the poison is delivered to her husband's mistress, her husband ends up being the one who drinks it and passes away. And from there, a whole investigation is launched because the bottle of poison that was used, the lady gave it to her, like her lady's maid, to put in the drink. And her lady's maid had made a wax copy of the bottle just in case she had a bad feeling about it. And so she, before she leaves, she quits once everything goes to hell and she makes a stop at the police and tells them what she knows that she thinks um, the Lord was poisoned. So <laughs> now they're looking for, they're looking for, you know, whoever owns the, wherever the vial came from. And there's an address on the back because Eliza was the one to put the, the poison in the bottle and she picked a wrong bottle. It's one that um, Nella's mom used when it was just, you know, a medicinal shop. <sighs> so, um, what ends up happening is uh, at some point Eliza goes to a sort of magic potion bookstore where she meets a boy um, and he gives her a book and in there she finds a spell for writing, like correcting bad fortune. And um, she makes up the potion while Nella's gone out. And while Nella's gone out, she finds out that the police are in hot pursuit. So she rushes back to the shop. She's like, we have to close up and we have to leave. And she says, Eliza, you have to run. I need you to not go down with me for this. You're so young. Go back to the woman you worked for before and just forget about me, forget about this. Let me deal with this. And what we had been learning as, you know, throughout the book was that Nella was very sick. Um, she, it's never really said what disease is plaguing her, but um, she's very sick. So she's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in a jail cell, obviously. So she's decided she's going to jump off a bridge <laughs> into the water and just be done with it. She's kind of looking forward to the sweet relief of death at this point because she's so sick. So they, they go and they're about to go their separate ways and the police are right outside. So they just start running together in the same direction. And Nella has, um, uh, sorry, Eliza has the little vial of the potion that she made up. And they're both on the, um, Eliza's on the, Nella's on the bridge and she's getting ready to jump. And Eliza comes running over and she she gets over the like the railing of the bridge first and she drinks drinks from the vial and she says, this is gonna save me and she jumps into the water. And at that point, Nella realizes that this is a gift that Eliza has given her because by the time the police come, catch up to them, they can see that Nella is very sick, very tired. And they saw the one girl jump, so they're like, well, the ones we were chasing, it couldn't have been this one because she's very sick. There's no way she was running a few minutes ago. And so Nella takes that as her chance to go um, finish up her business and then die in peace because she knows she's very sick. She's, she's going. And um, we find out right at the end that whatever potion... Um, Eliza had made up it worked and she went on to marry the bookstore boy and have a set of twins before he passes away. Because of course in the 1700s a lot of people didn't live to be very old. And um, it was just, it was, it was sweet to learn that whatever little potion she had made worked and it had allowed her to appear drowned but not be. And yeah, that was basically the end of the story. Of course, also in Caroline's bit, she had learned about them. Um, her and Gaynor had managed to piece a lot of the puzzle pieces together and figure it all out. So that is The Lost Pock Theory. I would recommend it. 
like I said, I loved, loved the, um, the chapters from the past. Didn't mind the ones from the present, but I was just so enthralled with the ones from the past. I could have read a whole book just about Eliza and Nella. But um, all in all, I enjoyed the entire thing very much. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this one and if you did what you thought. And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And I will see you on Monday with another vlog. Bye, guys.